We talk about modularity all the time, but what is it really? It is a way to combine and recombine our control panels to create new solutions. And it is the only way to create a perfect control panel series, because tomorrow you'll wake up to new demands and your Skyhoy panels are designed for that future. Admittedly, all our customers start with a single panel and it's made and purchased for a specific purpose, but you can always purchase more panels to your fleet. So for instance, this is a Airfly Pro, a switching panel with 12 inputs, but we have the Crosspoint 48 that lines up with all these buttons and these two can be combined in a modular fashion like you see. Another really great example is the master key one. It's also a switching panel, also 12 columns of input buttons, T bar and a section over here for transition. We can add a master key 48 to this one. So it will look like this. Actually, we can go even beyond that. We could add yet another master key 48. But usually having a setup like this is more often seen with the mega panel. So if we take the master key one out of the equation, we have panels, we call them transition blocks, and they are arranged in a way so that the T bars are offset. So you have access to both of them without any obstructions. And then you can add the master key 48 to these. And of course you can have many more of these. So many people will buy a one or two ME panel that looks more or less like this, where you have master key 48, two of these, and then a transition block over here. It's actually possible to do modularity with PDC controllers. This is PDC Extreme, very popular controller. You can combine that with a Frameshot Pro that has color displays in which you can show thumbnails of the preset you capture. This solution is actually possible to use with the PTC Pro as well. So it's not that PTC Extreme is exclusive in this solution, PTC Pro works with that as well. So basically both of these controllers will work with a Frameshot Pro. We also have the PTC View. This is a simple PTC controller that has the color thumbnails in, but if you want to extend this with more access to parameters using additional knobs. If you want more buttons with color thumbnails or color displays for thumbnails, you can have that, including a menu section over here. So in a sense, by purchasing the uh, Frameshot Plus, along with the PTC view, you now get a bigger PTC controller with these two combined. In this video in particular, we want to take a look at these four controllers. This one is called Waveboard Mini Waveboard. This is inline 22 and this is Colorfly. Colorfly is a controller made for shading cameras. We have four motorized faders and a section full of buttons that allow you to access parameters beyond iris and master black and what else you apply to the channels over here. If you want to extend Colorfly to do more cameras with direct access to the lens control, you can basically take a Waveboard Mini and add to it. But it's also possible if you do not own a Colorfly, but you own a Waveboard Mini and an Inline 22 to basically combine these two and you would have the equivalent of the Colorfly. Or if you want to have this workflow where you have the Colorfly with eight channels of direct access to camera control, you could actually achieve that as well with the Inline 22 and the Waveboard. We'll now demonstrate some of these principles. And the first thing I'll do is to connect the Waveboard and the Waveboard Mini. It's actually an example I did not mention before, but it's just as valid. So these two panels, when we put them together, we need one of them to be the host. And I've decided this is the Waveboard Mini, this guy. So this one will drive all the logic, the business intelligence that will connect to your audio system, whatever that might be. The Waveboard, on the other hand, will be in raw panel mode. So if you go into the hardware manager, you just need it to listen on port, not listening on socket. You can also turn off Reactor, which is an application that's most likely running on your Waveboard. There's no need to have it running in this mode. So from Waveboard Mini, I will simply select the Waveboard V2 here. And now these two are connected, as you can see. Oh, actually, the Waveboard is managed by the Waveboard Mini. 
If I remove this panel again and I look into the configuration, you can see we have configurations that will work with these two together. For instance, there's one for WaveBot and WaveBot Mini working with the Prodigy MP audio processor. So if I pick that one for my WaveBot Mini, you see that I'm missing a panel. And essentially, it's the same process. I can discover panels. It's looking for a WaveBot on the network, and I'll select my WaveBot to now have these two combined. Now that I have added the Prodigy MP connected to it, all the faders are in position. I can browse around in the different banks and the faders will adjust to it. The next thing I want to do is to change the uh, waveboard for the inline 22. And now I want to essentially replicate a color fly on these two panels. Now that I have put the inline 22 next to the waveboard mini, I can select a different configuration than the default, the one called Inline 22 WaveBot Mini Generic Camera Control. That would be a good pick. And in this case, I need to search for the Inline 22 on the network. I'll select it when I find it, and now we can add cameras for camera control. Let's quickly add a few devices we can control as cameras. On our network, we can search. So now we have a bunch of cameras I can navigate their menus, I can change the settings. We also see iris control here. If I page to a different page, then I access other cameras and so on. So this is how the WaveBot Mini and the Inline 22 can essentially play the role of a Colorfly. A Colorfly as a separate controller looks like this. The Colorfly. These two controllers in one, all right? So what we just created modularly here is what you get in this single device right here. And from this one, we can extend with the WaveBot Mini on the side. So let's try that one out. So far, we can combine these two. Inline 22 is disconnected. Colorfly is connected. It's on the network. It has an IP address, it says in this field. So I can go to that. And in this UI, I need to do the same as what I did just a moment ago. In Hardware Manager, I needed to be listening on the port because the Colorfly will be a guest on the host system over here, the WaveBot Mini. It's just a choice I make. It could just as well be the other way around, but this is how I'm going to play it right now. Save and restart, and the Colorfly is just exercising the faders real quick. And then back here at the WaveBot Mini, we'll simply remove this configuration. We'll also remove this panel. So now we have like a fresh start. And then we pick, let me see, we need a WaveBot Colorfly and WaveBot Mini for generic camera control. Yes. Okay. So that's step number one. And then we'll add the Colorfly here. So we'll select that. And now these two are apparently connected, bound together in a configuration. And for us to sort of check that, let's just add some of the cameras. And as I'm adding cameras here, I'm holding down shift, by the way, this is a pro tip. I am essentially, you know, setting up cameras on, on these faders on the panel. So if I added a little bit more cameras, then I would, it would be duplicates that would now be added on a second page. But it gives me a chance to show you as I'm paging forth and back here, then I'm basically going between camera one to eight and then up to nine to 11 here. And those that has iris control and is not mapped down on the same, which I think maybe is the case for these two. If I change those around, then yeah, now I have, because actually I managed to put the same two cameras apparently onto the same two faders. This, this could be a feature. Actually, you could then have camera one and camera nine, camera two and camera 10 always be the same. And that means as you're paging, only those faders out there would change. But this illustrates how you can extend your camera control to more channels, if you will, in the future by just adding another Skyhawk controller. Another way to achieve the same is to take the inline 22 and the wave board. So if these two controllers are put together, they are essentially the same as a Colorfly and a WaveBot Mini. So we can do that. We can actually let the Colorfly manage the, the other three controllers all together, and that would be for convenience reasons. And it could also be if you want to have only a single connection to all the devices you want to control, then it is maybe a good idea, the right design to let one device talk just one time to the cameras and all the other devices will be able to control them through that single 
controller over here. So I'll add panels and I'll discover panels on the network. I'm finding the wave board already, that's fine. And with the wave board selected, I will simply choose the configuration that combines it with an inline 22. So now that I'm missing a panel, I'm going to add this panel and it should be discoverable on the network right here. And look, it is connected, yes. So all I need to do now is to take my camera selector and then add the cameras that I want. So I'm basically doing the same as we just did a moment ago, adding cameras here. I will probably just add them a few times over here because it helps me to populate the whole thing a little bit. All right, so what do we have? We have a wave board and an inline 22 able to act as a color fly and a wave board mini. And these two are separate. They are controlling the same cameras, but of course, as control panels, their configurations are separate. It's all managed by this one. So if I unplug the WaveBot Mini, it is, this is not going to work anymore because this one controls everything at the moment. I can think of at least two reasons why you might choose a configuration with a single master that controls the other guest panels on this one being the host. And that would be that single linked to the cameras. If for whatever reason, the device you want to control can only accept a single connection, that means you need to have a single Skahoy device talking to it and the others has to go through that one. The second is you're lazy because it is really convenient having a single interface, right? But if you want to split it up, then it would be possible to achieve the same by now taking the waveboard and the inline 22 and putting those in focus. So if we go to the web UI of the waveboard, then inside of this one, we would enable reactor as one thing. If we now go to the home screen, you'll see reactor will be unconnected to itself, all right? But this is simply because in packages, we need to go to hardware manager, listen on socket and listen on port needs to be swapped around, then restarted. And as we have now done so, you'll see that in the home screen, it will connect to itself in a moment. To add the inline 22, all I need to do now is to pick the configuration that includes that, search for the panel online, and we'll find it here on the network and now they're both connected and I can add cameras. I hope now you understand how modularity in the Skahoy universe is imagined to work. All our panels can be combined in this way to create absolutely new and yet unknown ways to control your broadcast and AV productions.